Good morning, or depending when you're listening to this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice of radio, so today I'm going to tell you about an exciting new deck. And my exciting new deck, I mean a deck that might come along in the expanded format and ruin everybody's fun. And it revolves around Sableye. Now, he came out in Dark Explorers quite a while ago, and a lot of people are familiar with this bad boy because he made a big impact on the format for quite some time. If you are not familiar with him, let me point you towards the second attack, Junk Hunt. He's a basic Pokemon, and he attacks for one Dark Energy, which means you can get him going straight away. Sounds good. If the attack is any good, and oh my goodness he is, Junk Hunt allows you to get two item cards from your discard pile and put them into your hand. That means that unless your opponent plays a card like an end, for instance, forcing you to shuffle your hand into your deck, you are guaranteed to have those two cards to use next turn. So then the question becomes, with this great power comes great responsibility to ruin your opponent's game. So what are you going to use with this? Well, let me run you through the tricks he has had up to now. First of all, Garbodor. You get a Garbodor on the bench, you attach a Pokemon tool, usually Floatstone because it gives you free retreat, and then your opponent cannot use any abilities. And that sounds like a fun way to ruin their game, but Sableye can do so much more than that. He can deny you energy. He can use Crushing Hammer and Enhanced Hammer, both of which are item cards, to discard energy from your Pokemon. Crushing Hammer discards any energy for a heads. Enhanced Hammer doesn't need a coin flip, but you can only get rid of a special, not a basic energy. And then you've got the supporter cards. Team Flare Grunt discards an energy off the active. And Zerosic discards an energy from any Pokemon. But it's got to be a special energy, following the rule that special energy is easier to get rid of than basic. So it's, they're building in this risk-reward thing, and this goes all throughout the game. It's a good thing. Now, you might be thinking, well, hang on a second, Ross. All of those Zero Six and Team Flare grunts, they ain't no item cards. And you're right. They ain't no item cards. But we now have the item card VS Seeker, which allows you to take any supporter card from your discard pile and put it into your hand. So you can use that to reuse any of these supporter cards turn after turn. Maybe ability locking your opponent and denying their energy. Maybe that's not enough. May I introduce you to Verbank City Gym and Hypnotoxic Laser, which together give you a 50% chance of putting your opponent to sleep, although then they have a 50% chance of waking up. So really it's a 25% chance of putting them to sleep. And it poisons them, but because of Verbank City Gym, they take 30 damage between turns. Need more? How about Trick Shovel, which allows you to discard the top card of your opponent's deck. You don't have to, of course. If they're going to get a terrible top deck, you can leave it, and then, you know, try and discard the next one. And one of the ways... Now, some of these Sableye decks play Hypnototic Laser and Verbank City Gym, and those decks can win by prizes. Other versions of the deck don't play laser, and they have to win by decking your opponent out, using the rule that if your opponent is unable to draw a card at the beginning of their turn, they automatically lose the game. Sounds good, if you're not the person who's unable to draw a card. So what you do is you just run your opponent out of energy, and you use cards like Trick Shovel to make sure that they deck out. And then, of course, you can use cards like Lissandra, which allows you to bring an opponent's Pokemon into the active. So you can use that to strand a high retreat Pokemon in the active, and then get rid of all their energy so they're stuck, they can't retreat, they can't attack, and they just deck out. But there was one card that made Sableye almost unfair, and that's Life Dew. Now, this is an ace spec card, which means you can only have one of any type of ace spec in your deck. But the thing about Life Dew is, if you have Life Dew attached to a non-EX Pokemon, like Sableye, and that non-EX Pokemon, like Sableye, gets KO'd, your opponent doesn't take a prize. And it doesn't matter how he's KO'd, you can't get around it by killing him with poison or something like that, as you've been able to get around some things in that manner. No, no, no. When Sableye goes down, you don't take a prize, or your opponent doesn't take a prize. Now, that's all well and good, but here's the thing about Life Dew. You put it on Sableye, Sableye gets KO'd, your opponent doesn't take a prize. On your next turn, you have to Junk Hunt to get the Life Dew back, 
at which stage your opponent then has a turn where you don't have life due down. Now it means they might have to take 12 KOs rather than 6, but it means they can occasionally take some KOs. Now, things, ladies and gentlemen, have gotten worse. That's, that's your brief rundown of the Sableye deck so far. You use Sableye, you junk hunt all of these fun things, and you play what's most annoying. Maybe you get Garbodor, maybe you go Energy Denial, maybe you go Laser Verbank, maybe you go Trick Shovel and try and deck them out. Whatever you do, you've always got that life due on Sableye to make sure that you are not giving up any prizes. And yeah, your opponent can use Lysander to take the occasional bench prize. But let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, they are not going to be doing that six times per game to take all six prizes. And then Breakpoint came out. Now, Breakpoint is the new Pokemon set, which has just released. Now, it released on the 3rd of February, which means it is tournament legal three weeks later on the 24th of February. Probably a week and a half after this video goes live. And there are two cards which make the Sableye deck potentially actually unfair. Rather than potentially unfair or almost unfair, this could make it actually unfair. Now the first one of these is Delinquent, and Delinquent allows you to discard a stadium in play and discard free cards from your opponent's hand. Now your opponent gets to choose which free cards to discard, but I like to play the kind of game where if you think about how annoying Delinquent will be, next time you're playing a game of Pokemon, just randomly look at your hand on a few turns. How many turns do you actually have free cards that you would be happy discarding and it wouldn't massively affect your game plan going forward? And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that Sableye can junk hunt for a VS Seeker and use Delinquent as its supporter every single turn. And a lot of the time, it's not going to need to play stuff like Sycamore to draw more cards because you can junk hunt for whatever you like. And actually, I should have mentioned this slightly earlier, but let's not forget Battle Compressor is a card. That allows you to go through your deck and discard any free cards you like. So you can discard all these lovely item cards straight away to guarantee that they're in the discard. Don't want to have to worry about drawing into life due? Don't try and draw into life due. Use Battle Compressor to put it in the discard and junk hunt it on the very first turn of the game. And similarly, you can use Battle Compressor to get rid of your one copy of Delinquent because when you're grabbing it out the discard pile, you don't need four copies. Maybe you play two in case one is prized, but you're just going to Battle Compress it into the discard so you don't need to have loads of copies in there to try and draw into it. Delinquent is annoying. Delinquent is a nice new trick for Sableye, but it's not what makes Sableye broken. No, 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 ladies and gentlemen. What makes Sableye particularly annoying is the new card Puzzle of Time. Now, Puzzle of Time is a weird kind of card where you can actually play two of them in one turn. Now, if you play one, and they've got to be played at the same time, so you can't play one and then later play a second, they have to be played at the same time. And if you play one, you get to look at the top three cards of your deck and rearrange them. Meh, it's alright. But if you play two, you get to put any two cards from your discard pile into your hand. And by now I'm assuming you can see where I go with this. You can use Battle Compressor to put any card in the discard pile. And then every turn, you use Sableye to Junk Hunt for Puzzle of Time. And then you can search two Puzzle of Time. And then you get to dis search your discard pile for any two cards. And this means two things. First of all, now Junk Hunt essentially gets you any two cards, rather than just any two item cards. And secondly, you get the cards you want now. So let's go back to our example of Life Dew. The thing about Life Dew is, like I've said, you junk hunt it the turn after you're KO'd, your opponent gets a turn where you don't have life due, then you put it back on again. Not so with this. You junk hunt for two puzzle of time, your opponent KO Sableye, you use those two puzzle of time to grab a life due and any other card you like, you then put the life due on the newly active Sableye, and then you junk hunt for two puzzle of time. It is utterly Utterly ludicrous, ladies and gentlemen. It's not even fair how good this is going to be. Because you can have now a deck with Sableye where, picture this, 
Every single turn, their active Sableye has a life dew attached. And every single turn, they've got maybe a laser, maybe a Verbank, maybe a crushing hammer or an enhanced hammer, or any of these cards to get rid of your energy, to leave you poisoned, to use Lissandra to drag something into the active and leave it stranded there. And quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, if there's a turn where they've got nothing better to do, they're going to VS Seeker for a delinquent and make you discard free cards from your deck. This Sableye deck could be absolutely brutal. So, the next question, and really the only other question I want to try and answer in this video today, ladies and gentlemen, how do we beat this Sableye deck? I don't know about you, but I'm one of these people, I'm very impatient when I play the Pokemon trading card game. I want to be attacking on turn two and smashing and taking six prizes and running around with my arms raised shouting about how great I am. And it's difficult to do that when all of your games go to time. So the first way to beat Sableye is try and win one game in a best of three and not let it finish. Most tournaments tend to be 50 minutes best of three. And the rule is, if any game does not finish, by which I mean somebody takes six prizes or somebody else decks out, is unable to draw a card at the beginning of their turn, and if a game does not finish, it does not count. So what you can do is try and sneak game one, maybe their life due is prized because they can only play one in their deck, or maybe you can find a way to win some other way, and then you just let them slow down the game, and you deck out very slowly. If Sableye doesn't win game one, then you can often make a position where you play your game. Don't slow play, nobody likes people who slow play, that makes you a terrible person. But Sableye games tend to be long, so if you can win game one, Sableye will often not be able to win game two, and they certainly are not going to win games two and three, so you get a draw at the very least. But let's say that doesn't work, let's say you actually want to beat Sableye, how can you do it? Well I have got four options, and we'll see how they go. In fact, let's rank them. Everybody likes a good list. At number four, killing Sableyes really, really quickly. By what I mean is, your opponent is only playing four Sableyes. And yeah, they're going to be playing cards like Sacred Ash to try and recover those Sableye. But maybe you can play an aggressive deck, I don't know, Raichu. Just an example, don't get, don't get too bad out of shape. And maybe you can just KO a Sableye every single turn and they miss a couple turns of Junk Hunt. And you are so aggressive so quickly, your opponent is unable to win the game. Now, Raichu relies on double colorless energy, so maybe that's not such a great example. But any aggressive deck that can kill Sableyes fast enough, maybe your opponent draws poorly. Maybe they're unable to get their Sableyes going. And if they can't have a Sableye and an energy every single turn, they're going to be stuck. Now, don't get me wrong. They can use Professor's Letter to search for energy. And they can use Puzzle of Time to get energy out the discard pile. But maybe you can put enough early pressure. I don't think it's a great way to win. And that's why it's number four. At number three, bench damage. Now... This would involve a card like, for instance, Landorus CX. You do 30 damage to the active with Hammerhead and 30 damage to the bench. Now, as I've said, attacking the active is basically pointless. But what you can do here is just be attacking the bench, doing 30 to the bench Pokemon who won't have um, these life dues attached because there's only one in the deck. And maybe... You can win by knocking out enough bench Pokemon with bench damage. The big problem with this is that all of these attacks are going to cost energy. And any attack that costs energy means that Sableye is going to be able to use cards like Crushing Hammer and Enhanced Hammer or even Team Flare Grunt to get rid of all of your energy. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, that you're probably not going to be able to do the many attacks it's going to take to win the game. Never mind. And that brings me on to my second best way to win. This is spreading damage counters. So my example for this is going to be Greninja. And the new Greninja, the new Greninja break at least, allows you to discard an energy from your hand. And that allows you to put six damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. And then you've got X and Y Greninja that allows you to discard an energy from your hand and put three damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. Pokemon, any Pokemon, but you'd be going for the bench because they don't have the life due attached. And what this means is, 
that you can actually put yourself in a position where your opponent can't play Crushing Hammer to get rid of your energy. You just play all your energy straight from your hand. And in a deck like Greninja, you're going to be playing energy recovery cards like Fisherman, for instance, or Energy Retrieval. And the theory is, you don't ever bother trying to attack the active, you just spread damage counters to the bench. Now, people have suggested Crobat and Golbat, I don't think they spread enough damage with their ability. You really need to use something like Greninja. Here's the problem, of course. Greninja relies on abilities, as do Bats rely on abilities, and we've already said that Sableye is going to be playing Garbodor to block abilities. However, let's not forget that the new Greninja from Breakpoint has an attack which blocks abilities from all of your opponent's Pokémon, which means it will block Garbodor's ability, because it's one of your opponent's Pokémon, which will then free up Greninja's ability. I hope that makes sense. I'm pretty sure I'm right on the ruling. That's what the comments are for if I'm wrong. So you turn off Garbodor's ability using Greninja, which turns on Greninja's ability. But then, of course, you're trying to attack, and that means that you are in a situation where your opponent can get rid of your energy. Hopefully, you get to a stage where the Greninjas are down, and the second the Trubbish hits the field, you can then kill it with fire. And by fire, I mean Greninja's ability. But you see with all of these, there's a lot of ifs. If you can get your Greninjas out, if you can start attacking to turn off their ability, if you can get the energy in hand, it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination. So that's why it only comes in at number two. And that brings me to what I consider to be the only surefire way to take down Greninja, and that is Trainer Lock. Now, we have two ways of trainer locking, and what trainer lock does is it basically, or item lock as it would be nowadays, it makes junk hunt useless. It makes crushing hammer and enhanced hammer useless. It makes VS seeker useless, and most importantly of all, it makes puzzle of time and life dew useless. Now, when we're talking about trainer lock, we have two options. We have vile plume, who has an ability that turns off trainers among the field. Big problem with that, of course, is Garbodor. And Vileplume versus Garbodor gives an interesting dynamic, whereby if Vileplume comes up first, Garbodor is unable to attach a Floatstone, so Garbodor will never get activated. Unless your opponent plays a Hex Maniac to turn off Vileplume long enough to put a Floatstone on the Garbodor. Hope that made sense. The pictures are on the screen, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm making sense here. However, if the Garbodor gets out quickly enough with a tool attached, then the Vile Plume doesn't ever turn on. So the better way, and this really is my number one way to combat Sableye, Seismitoad. You use Quaking Punch to turn off your opponent's items for the game. And you Quaking Punch every single turn. Now don't get me wrong, this is not foolproof. Your opponent is going to be using cards like Zerosic to try and get rid of your double colorless energy. They're going to be using cards like Lysander to try and drag non-Seismitoad Pokemon into the active to stop you Quaking Punch for a turn. However, what this means is they are all supporters. And VS Seeker cannot be used under item lock. Which means, yes, they'll have a turn or two of Lysander or Zerosic, but as long as you can weather that very tiny storm, more like a soft drizzle, you should be okay. And the good thing about Seismitoad, he's a basic Pokemon, and he attacks for a double colorless energy. And that means he can be quite nicely teched into any deck whatsoever. So... Let me be clear about this, ladies and gentlemen. This Sableye deck is going to be a powerhouse. It's going to be amazing. And one thing I should mention, in any bad matchup Sableye has, in any game where it's not doing very well, then every turn it just goes puzzle of time for a Verbank City gym and a delinquent and every or whatever stadium it wants to play. And every single turn, it just goes delinquent, discard free cards, delinquent, discard free cards. So something like, let's say a Landorus comes up and it's starting to spread a whole bunch of damage around, Sableye can just go delinquent, 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 delinquent. Same thing with a deck like Greninja. I'm going to find it very difficult to be getting all my energy out my discard pile to use all of my abilities if I'm having to discard free cards from my hand every single turn. And that's one thing that Sableye can make you do.
So hopefully I've explained nicely what this Sableye deck does, why it's going to become so much better after Breakpoint, and different ways you can use to combat it. Now I am not saying that this is an unstoppable deck, nor am I saying that the four things I've suggested are the only ways to beat it. Maybe there are others. If you've got any other ways to beat it, chuck them down in the comments. These videos that I do these, I'm not giving you a deck list, I'm not saying, hey, go and play this deck. What I'm saying is, hey, here's a deck, rather than give you a list to copy, I'm going to explain the deck, give you the choices, let's have a conversation about how to play it or how to beat it. Anything you want to say, ladies and gentlemen, chuck it down in the comments and I shall reply to pretty much all of them. I'm going to be honest, I like replying to comments, that makes me happy. Now, one thing I like from you, ladies and gentlemen, I say one, I mean two, click the like button, it will take you a second. Go on, click it now, click it now, click it now. Click it now. Have you clicked it? Good. The other thing I would like you to do is to click subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you have, go find a friend. Get them to subscribe. This channel's been growing quite nicely lately, and I would like to see that continue because it makes me want to make more videos. I'm going to be back with more videos very shortly. I'm going to continue my look at the best cards from sets past, like my Heart Gold Soul Silver video recently. And I'm going to be bringing you a video asking whether that Greninja I mentioned is going to be any good. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, a rollickingly good time. Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.